When you send an API request to AWS, you have to sign the request because that's going to identify uh, who sent the request to AWS. So signatures do two things. It prevents data tampering and it verifies the identity of the requester. Um, just so you know, when you're using the CLI or SDK, requests are signed for you automatically. The only time that you would be um, uh, signing a request manually is that if you're using the API uh, directly through HTTP. Uh, as I've said before, uh, I, in general use, you do not want to do that unless you have to for some um, very uh, specific use case because you cannot use the SDK or CLI. Um, just so you know that not every single request requires signing. So for Amazon S3, there is uh, anonymous requests, like say when you have um, a public bucket and you just want people to be able to read files from it. Um, and there are some API operations uh, such as assume role with web identity where you're just not gonna be passing on signed requests because that is um, SCS is for used uh, for getting credentials. So at that point you wouldn't have any credentials to sign with. Uh, so to speak. Um, here is an example of uh, a signature being used. And so this example is for, um, uh, or within a query parameter, there's a few different ways you can specify it, uh, but that's where it would go. And so when you use S3 or other services and you expect the URLs, you're definitely gonna see the signatures there and that's what it is. Um, it just has two different protocols for signing, version two, which is the old one. Nobody uses this anymore. And then we have version four. So let's just take a quick look at um, how to sign uh, on version four. So we just have a general idea how it works, okay?